Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I just want to go over some of the layout skills for the um, final exam page layout, uh, the film festival layout. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see. Uh, just looking over some finished exams. It's, it's, it's Friday at the uh, end of finals week. And lots of students are doing some cool things. Uh, here's an example of one that I think worked out really nicely. I don't think there's any identifying information on here. So basically, widescreen, we've got a header uh, there along the left. We have a, a group of six blocks, and there's a footer down there at the bottom. On a narrower device, header moves up to the top. We still have our six blocks, and footer is still at the bottom. And at a very narrow device, like a phone, pretty much the same as the tablet, but we only have four blocks instead of six. So four blocks for phone, six blocks for tablet, and then desktop is the six blocks with the header along the left. <clears throat> now several students did this very, very well, and they used some slightly different techniques. In fact, one student used tables, which they did excellently, but I'm gonna I discourage them, and I would discourage you from using tables for this particular layout. What does work, and you can tell this student did it over here, is using uh, display flex. So that's going to be our easiest way to accomplish this layout. So that's what I want you to keep in mind. And I also want you to always simplify. So even though this can seem very overwhelming, boy, it looks like there's you know, one block over here, and then there's six blocks, and then another block down here. When you're working on any layout, see how simple you can get it. So I want you to imagine for a moment that there's only two blocks. There's the header on the left, and then there's this big block over here on the right. So one on the left, one big one on the right. And on widescreen layouts, the header, the big block on the left is on the left, big block on the right is on the right, and on narrower layouts, big block is on the top, and I'm sorry, header is on the top, and then the big block is down below. So basically, we have two blocks. They're side by side on wide layouts. They're one on top of the other on smaller layouts. Great. Now I've started a page, and it is blank. And I'm going to be just do, using one file, so I'm going to do internal styles. So let me go ahead and take a moment to create a reset rule here. Margin 0, padding 0, or 0, and my favorite, box sizing border box. There we go. So nothing yet to do. And I'm not even referencing the exam directions. I think I had them open at one point, but then I shut them. But, but we'll just go along with basically a visual from seeing some of those other student pages. Now in the body of my page, I'm going to create a main container. Now I remember this was in the directions to make a container and make sure that it flexes, that it's centered, but it also has a max width of 1400 pixels. Technically, you don't need the container for that, but you, you could use the body as an alternative. But let me go ahead and shrink this up so you can visualize that the body of my page only contains this container. And within this container, I'm going to have my header right there. That's not how I want to type it. I don't need that angle bracket. And then I'm going to have that main section. There we go. So I'm just creating two big blocks for my main container. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use the word main here. For the body container. <laughs> the header is sometimes on the left. Main is sometimes on the right. And then other times, the header is on top and the main is on the bottom. And I'm going to work on that first. I'm going to get this basic layout working, and then I can tackle the individual components of the main, and then the layout will be done. Now, I'm doing all of this internally, so normally you probably would have, were working on an external CSS file, but I'm just doing it all in one just for convenience, and I'm going to scroll up and down, and then I'll have this one file. Okay, so... Now I need to start doing some styling so I can visualize things. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set my, uh, let's see, what do I want to set here? Uh, I'll go ahead and set the body of my page. And 
nothing too exciting. I'll do a min height of 100 VHs, 100 viewport heights, and a background color of tan, just so you can see that my page is getting styled. And there we go, so there's my page. Everything's working there. You know what I'm gonna do? I do have this font, Railway. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a font in there too. Not necessary though. There we go, I'm gonna do that. Let me just see if that works. And yep, it worked. I can see my font change. Cool, all right, not a big deal. But here's where I really wanna start getting into things. I wanna mess around with this container. Dot container, because it's a class, of course. Now this container is gonna be pretty important. And in the short term, I wanna visualize this container. So I'm gonna give this container a background color that really stands out as yellow green. Now this container is not gonna look very impressive first because it's small, because there's not much content in there. However, I will set the min height of this container to also be 100 VHs. Now by using min height, it can get bigger but at least it can't be smaller than that. Now my container is going to fill up the screen. Look at that. You can't even see the body anymore because the container is completely filling it up. Now this container is going to have a width. I've got a min height, but I'm going to set a width of, I'm going to do 98% just so you can see. Actually, I'm going to go smaller than that short term here. I'll do 90%. Now we can see that that container is narrower than the body. And then I'm also going to do margin, zero picks, top and bottom, auto, left and right. Now what that's going to do, it's going to center that container within the body of the page. And let me go ahead and turn on my uh, web developer tools. I don't know why my keyboard shortcut here at home is not working, control shift I, but anyway, that works. And so now you can see when I resize this um, browser window, um, my green container is still horizontally centered in that space. So that's what I wanted to go for. Now, the trick is, I didn't necessarily want to, I can't remember what the instruction said, but it doesn't need to be 90% wide. In fact, before I mess around with that, let me go ahead and put in a max width of 1400 pixels, because that part was in the directions. So now, even as my page gets wider, at some point the container will lock out at 1400 pixels wide. And now I can go to this and I can change my width to something like 99% or even 100%. Nothing wrong with using 100%. So I'll do 100%. Ah, that's right, my keyboard doesn't do that. So I'll do 100. And now, once again, my container is filled up. So, okay, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is now when I go to a really wide display, notice my container maxes out. So my green container is not going to be bigger than 1,400 pixels. And when it is, it'll be centered. So if somebody was looking at this on a widescreen desktop or a TV, it'll still be maxed out at 1,400 pixels. But for all other devices, the container will fill up the space. Now, as I scroll left and right here, you always want to look down here at the bottom. Let me close that and see that I'm never getting that horizontal scroll. Horizontal scrolls are the kiss of death. We want to avoid those whenever possible, and it is practically always possible to avoid a horizontal scroll. Okay, so that's basically dealing with the container. Lovely. Okay, so now that that container is pretty good, not done with the container, by the way, because the way my container is set up, my container is a Flexbox container. And then header and main are some Flexbox items within that Flexbox container. So let me visualize these other elements and I'll come back to the container. Now my header, um, let's see, my header is gonna be um, along the left. I guess I shouldn't talk, worry about that right now. Let's make sure we can see that container. I'm gonna give it a background color of um, uh, da, 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 four, five, six. And I'll give it a foreground color of two, two, two. No, 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 E, 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 because four, five, six is a dark color, so I'm just gonna put a light color on that header. Um, that's good for now. Uh, or is it, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna just do that. And then I'm gonna have main. I'm gonna give it a background color of uh, 
six, seven, eight. That's similar, but a little bit lighter. And also a foreground color of EEE. Let's see if we can visualize these two things. And we can. I can see where my header is, and I can see where my main section is. They're both, they're just different shades of, uh, of a bluish gray. All right, but I can visualize them. All right, not, not a problem. So what I want to figure out here is how do I get the header and the main side by side? Because right now they're one on top of the other. Now, the way my directions were written, it kind of made it sound like we're going from desktop down to phone. We could do this from phone to desktop. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. So, um, and I, I guess I'll go from desktop down because that's probably you know way most people might do it. So I can see that, all right, I want these things to be side by side. And there's a couple ways to do that, but the way you've read about in your book and the way that you practiced uh, earlier in the term with your six box layout and your nine boxes layout and things like that, and in that participation where we had a responsive layout, was to use display flex. And that's gonna be a really convenient tool for us. So I'm gonna head up to my container and I'm gonna create another declaration in here with display flex. There we go. And then in addition to that, I'm going to use flex flow. Mm, technically, I'm not going to do that yet because I don't think we're going to need it. Yeah. Let me just save that and refresh. Look at that. Header is on the left and the main section is on the right within that container. Let me bring this over here so Everything's kind of filled up the space a little bit, but you can still see, oh, things aren't as wide as I want them to be. So this is where we will change a few things. I do recall in the directions, the header was supposed to be like 300 pixels wide. So I'm gonna set a min width of 300 pixels. Now you could do a width of 300 pixels here too. The only reason I'm doing a min width is because I know there's gonna be times when it stretches and fills up the, the width completely, you know, for phones. So I'm just gonna do a min with the 300 pixels and let's refresh that. All right, that's definitely wider. Now, what do you do for something like for the main? Well, what is your first thought? Min with um, 100%, let's see what that does. Now that kind of works, but I'm getting that horizontal scroll down there at the bottom. So that's not gonna be the best solution. Um, there's actually other ways we could do this. Um, I don't want you to worry about this one. Uh, the advanced students would do it, but just so you can see, there's another technique where we can use a calc and we can do 100% minus 300 pixels. It's kind of neat. Save that, browser refresh, gets rid of the horizontal scroll and that fills things up. So there's a calc function that we can use with CSS, but you don't know about that one because that wasn't in your book or anything. <clears throat> so let's not worry about min width and instead let's use the flex property, flex. 1.0 auto is a good default one to use. So I'm doing a flex 1.0 auto for main. Refresh and there we go. No horizontal scroll down there. Now if I want to do something similar, I think I can do this up here. Let's try this for my header. Flex 1.0 300 pixels. And no, nope, that's not good because what's happening is the one is forcing it. Let me change this out of curiosity here. I like that min width idea, but let me just put a zero, zero, 300 pixels. And I think that works for us. So, so if you recall this flex property, that's the flex grow. So zero is actually gonna, I'll, I'll go ahead and keep that for now. And we can see that, okay, so even at different widths, I've got that header over on the left and that main section is on the right. Feeling pretty good about that. But what about when I go narrower? So something less than a thousand pixels and then something less than, I can't remember what I said, 700 pixels, something like that. So let's go ahead and create some media queries. And for this, I'm gonna do at media screen and max width 1000 pixels. And I get a set of curly braces. So these are going to be, let me just comment this out here, tablet styles. Then let me just copy and paste. These will be my phone styles. This is going to be a max width of 700 pixels. 
Okay. So let's see, I'm pretty happy with my widescreen or desktop layout. Now when I go to my tablet style, when I shrink my page down to, and notice I'm looking right up here in this top, this corner, just to see what my numbers are. When I go to less than a thousand, I want that header to be on the top, and I want my main section to be on the bottom. So I am going to do a few changes here. So in my max width changes, let's see, what do I want to change? I want to change the flex direction. Now I didn't use flex direction before. My container is going to be a flex box. It's already done as a flex box container display flex. But for instance, I, watch this. I'm going to go ahead and put flex direction. And uh, let's see, they're side by side, so that's a row. So I can just write the word row. Save that, browser refresh, and we shouldn't see a change because they're in a row. Cool. So what happens if I use flex direction down here for my container? So I'm going to say my dot container is now going to have a flex direction that's a column. I'm going to control S to save, go to my browser and refresh. Oh, it doesn't look like it's different. But what if I shrink this down to less than a thousand? Look at that. As soon as I shrink my browser down to less than a thousand, the flex direction changes from row, horizontal, to column, vertical. And that should be fine even for really narrow widths. All right, well, that's the basic gist right there, and everything's filling things up nice and neat the way I want. So this pretty much takes care of that main outer layout, but we're not completely done because in the HTML, I still need those six blocks within the main, and I need the footer. So let's go ahead and improve that. Now, so within my main, I'm going to go ahead and create some divs. And do I want to give them a class? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and call these my... Uh, uh, main blocks sounds good enough right can I let me just do copy paste one two three four five six that's six of them and then of course then I also have a footer in here <clears throat> okay now I can't visualize these yet but and I can't visualize them because they don't have any content they don't have any color so let's give them a little bit of both. I've got my main blocks and my main. Now, because these are, eh, let's get into this soon enough. So let me visualize these things. So my main blocks, where are they? I need to go up to my, I'm gonna go up to my widescreen CSS. Let me just go a little bit bigger than a thousand. And let's see, I have dot, main blocks. My main blocks, I'm going to give them a background color of um, pound sign FFC, that's a light shade of yellow, and I, I still want to be able to visualize them a bit more, so I'm also going to give them a, a temporary border of uh, three, four pixels solid, and I'll do something dark so we can see it. That's still not going to be enough. You're going to be able to see them now, but uh, they're all scrunched up, one all after the other, right up there. So I need to give them some minimum height and things like that. So let me go ahead and do a min height. And I can't remember if the direction specified something specifically. I'll just say 250 pixels here. That'll be enough. And now we can see, ah, there's those six blocks right there. But they're not arranged the way I want them to be good thing is now you are flexbox experts. So how did we get these other blocks like header and main side by side? Well, we did a display flex on the parent. In this example, main is a flexbox parent and these divs and the footer are flexbox item within the main flexbox parent, which means I can create a rule for main. Oops, I've already got one. How convenient. And I can go ahead and say display flex. Now, just by doing that, it changes things pretty dramatically. It's scrunched up all of my uh, um, my main blocks right in there. So, but things are happening. Things are happening. So now I'm going to go to my main blocks and I'm going to do a flex one o. I don't want 
to do auto, I'm going to try 50%. I'm going to save that browser refresh. Ah, and this is doing pretty good. It's actually getting them side by side, but look at this. One, two, three, all six of them are side by side. Well, I don't want that to happen. So I go to my main and I'm going to do a flex flow row wrap. I want them to wrap when necessary. Save that browser refresh. Now we get our six boxes, our main blocks right there. Pretty neat, huh? That's pretty good, but let me work on that footer while I'm here too. So I'm going to create a rule for the footer. And it's going to have a background color. I'll do orange so it stands out. I'm going to slap a border on it for the short term. Solid or gray, that's fine. I'll also give it a min height. 250 pixels. And this one is going to be similar. Flex 1.0 Auto, though. I want this um, footer to stretch all the way across. And there it is. There's my footer section right down there, stretching all the way across. OK, I'm liking it. So there are my six blocks. And uh, things are doing pretty good. I'm almost done with this layout. But of course, if this page is narrower, under 1,000, actually, that's already pretty good right there. Um, my block heights can change. I think that was in the directions too. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. However, I think under phone, when things go to phones, I want to hide these last two blocks. I don't want those two to show up. So I need to fix that. A couple ways we can do this. The easiest way is going to be to give these blocks down here their own identifier, their own class. And we can do that. We can give them two classes. So I can say main blocks, and this can be box five and box six. So now box five and box six have their own class. And then for my footer, I'm sorry, my phone styles, I can say dot box five, comma, dot box six. And then just very easily display none. Control S to save, browser refresh, and those two blocks are gone. So when I'm in tablet, I've got six blocks. And when I'm in uh, desktop, I still have six blocks, but the header is along the left. That is pretty darn good. <coughs> there might be a couple of items on the directions that I'm skipping, but certainly not much. I could get rid of those borders if they're distracting since I'm using different colors probably okay, but of course then you're not going to be able to appreciate those individual blocks. So I will leave the borders on for now, but um, I will go ahead and slap the border on the header though. Four picks solid. I'll do that same dark color. So now everything just seems a little more balanced and I've got borders on everything. There we go. Four blocks. Phone, header and footer at the bottom and top top and bottom, whatever, and then those are the other. So that is the basic layout structure here. The HTML for this is pretty simple. I've got my container. My container is a Flexbox container, which contains two children. It contains the header, and it contains the main. Now the main is also a Flexbox parent. So main is a Flexbox item, and it's a Flexbox container. The main contains six boxes, pretty much identical boxes, and it contains one footer. And then all of those are styled appropriately. Got, uh, there it is, there's my main container. And let me stretch this a little further to the, there's the header, there's the main, and all my main blocks, and my footer. And then I've got some tablet styles, basically just changing the flex direction when the device gets under a thousand pixels. And then for my phone style, I'm just getting rid of those boxes five and six when I get to less than 700 pixels. All right, so that's the basic layout. Um, other ways that this can be done, but this is a pretty simple way. And it's worth practicing because these are the kind of skills that you would use making web pages beyond this class. All right, talk to you later.